welcome to St Matthew's for this service of choral evensong and tonight commemorating Maundy Thursday in the solemn liturgy according to the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. And with my spirit. We are come together in the presence of Almighty God and of the whole company of heaven to offer unto him through our Lord Jesus Christ our worship and praise and thanksgiving to make confession of our sins, to pray as well for others as ourselves, that we may know more truly the greatness of God's love and show forth in our lives the fruits of his grace, and to ask on behalf of all people such things as their well-being doth require. Wherefore, let us stand and remember God's presence with us now. Please be seated as the choir leads us in the canticle, O Saviour of the World.
Here begins the first verse of the 12th chapter of the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbour in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head, legs and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning, you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. Here ends the lesson.
Here begins the first verse of the 13th chapter of the Gospel according to John. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you, for he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. I'm not speaking of all of you. I know whom I have chosen, but it is to fulfill the scripture the one who ate my bread has lifted his heel against me. I tell you this now before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe that I am he. Very truly, I tell you, whoever receives one whom I send receives me, and whoever receives me receives him who sent me. After saying this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and declared, very truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he was speaking. One of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter therefore motioned to him to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking. So while reclining next to Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. So when he had dipped the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. After he received the piece of bread, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, Do quickly what you are going to do. Now, no one at the table knew why he had said this to him. Some thought that because Judas had the common purse, Jesus was telling him, buy what we need for the festival, or that he should give something to the poor. So after receiving the piece of bread, he immediately went out, and it was night. When he had gone out, Jesus said, now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. 
Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Here ends the lesson.
most loving God. On the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave his disciples a new commandment to love one another as he loved them. Write his commandments in our hearts and give us the will to serve others. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee, we being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Light in our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. The Anthem. The Anthem, Glory Be to Jesus by Heinrich Schutz. Schutz was the greatest German composer of the 17th century and the greatest composer before J.S. Bach. He was a student of Monteverdi and Gabrielli and the first German composer to be an international star. Uh, sadly, in this uh, period, there was also the period of the great international plagues, including the Black Death. And so today, as we remember that uh, most holy week and this Maundy Thursday leading to Good Friday and to the hope of Easter Sunday. We remember all those parts of the world uh, that suffer on this night and cannot meet as we meet tonight uh, within our church buildings and within our congregations. Glory be to Jesus by Heinrich Schutz.
Let us pray. Praying for all who govern. Eternal God, fount and a source of all authority and wisdom, hear our prayer for those who govern. Give to Elizabeth, our Queen, grace as the symbol of loyalty and unity for all our different people. Give to the parliaments of this and every land wisdom and skill, imagination and energy, vision, understanding and integrity, that all may live in peace and happiness, truth and prosperity. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And remembering the many mercies that we enjoy in this country, at the same time upholding those who face its challenges. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful and that we show forth thy praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Spirit be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. and remembering all those across the world this night. In this holy week, praying for the themes of self-sacrifice and service. Of death and resurrection. and of the darkness giving way to light. O God, creator and preserver of all mankind, we humbly beseech thee for all sorts and conditions of people, that thou wouldst be pleased to make thy ways known unto them, thy saving health unto all nations. More especially we pray for the good estate of the Church Universal, that it may be so guided and governed by thy good spirit that all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth and hold the faith in unity of spirit, in the bond of peace and in righteousness of life. Finally, we commend to thy fatherly goodness all those who are in any ways afflicted or distressed, in mind, body or estate, that it may please thee to comfort and relieve them according to their several necessities, giving them patience under their sufferings and a happy issue out of all their afflictions. And this we beg for Jesus Christ, his sake. Amen. I'm giving thanks for those who serve in our choirs, in our sanctuaries, those who serve our parish community. Bless, O Lord, us thy servants who minister in thy temple, 
grant that what we sing with our lips we may believe in our hearts and what we believe in our hearts we may show forth in our lives through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we reflect for a moment on those who are close to our hearts. Those who may not gather with others in this most holy week. Particularly remembering the aged and infirm. Those who are unable to be with loved ones. Praying God's special grace to be with them. So we pray the prayer of St. John Chrysostom. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. And we pray for ourselves and each other in the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Before the blessing, allow me to remind you of our service in the morning at 9 o'clock, a service of Passion Hymns and Readings, then to invite you to join Father Martin and the congregation, the Catholic congregation at Maid Street for Stations of the Cross within their church building. So if you are feeling tired or infirm, wanting a little rest, actually that's an ideal service as well, rather than um, trotting from church to church. And then at 3 p.m. we have a sacred concert from darkness to light, including music from Handel's Messiah and the Sir Matthew Passion, which is a concert of organ music presented by our director of music, Father Malcolm Halford. And then on Easter Sunday morning at 9 o'clock, 
invited to join us here as we celebrate the resurrection. And so we open our hearts to receive God's blessing. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and those whom you love and those for whom we pray this night, this holy week, and always. Amen.